And they, when they called me in <laughs> to Bill's house and offered me the job of theater manager, I had no idea what I was supposed to be doing, but uh, I was certainly uh, happy to do it because I knew them all very well. And I worked, luckily, with a business manager who would not call himself general manager or anything else in those days, uh, who was uh, brilliant at finance. <laughs> and uh, I think that without Bernie Gomer's was the man in question, um, the Terrebonne would have faltered possibly in spite of having that good show. But um, I had never, I was away on the first year, which has bugged me ever since. I'm so glad that I finally was getting to see, uh, see, see plays that I hadn't seen before. And uh, so I came with the second year, and quite literally, I mean, we're still all doing everything including sweeping the floor and, and uh, taking the garbage out. And we started with the revival of the home. So I started on a high, which was great. And that season was uh, probably more successful than the first one. And the second, third one was more successful than the second one. It, 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 we had a very good run for quite a while. And yes, there was. Um, always the question of money, but we were uh, unlike a lot of the other theaters in that we did have a woman who was well placed in the community who was our fundraiser. So I, I always laughed that we actually had, and I checked in my programs, we actually had Sandra Sharwood out raising money for us. And we also had a number of people on our board and a number of people in the in the, in the core that uh, could call on uh, other people with money. So we were fortunate, and I know that for other theaters in the, in the city, this was a bit of a bone of contention in a way, oh, well, yeah, they, they could do it over there because they've got, they've got the, the influence. And that was, to a certain extent, true. However, we were also doing good work, and we were well-funded in the sense that anyone was well-funded in those days. Um, Yes, okay. In the first year, um, the first thing you should know about Bernie Balmers uh, was that uh, <laughs> Bernie, before he came to the car, <laughs> was uh, uh, collecting the rent at Rochdale, <laughs> which was oh, uh, a hippie haven. And what that he had <laughs> wonderful stories about going up to the 15th floor and past the Doberman Pinchers to collect the three months back due rent from the motorcycle gangs with the guns and the coke on the table. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, the way, you Bernie. the way he told me it was. Oh, yeah. no, I, 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 uh, but uh, it was Bill and I who wrote the mission statement for the Terragon. And uh, we did that uh, mostly for, for grant raising purposes. Um, recognition came, yes. And, and we ended up with a distinguished board, yes. Um, but uh, I'll never forget a day when. Uh, we called in two or three reporters because uh, De Maurier, I think it was, was going to give us a fat check. And uh, De Maurier both showed up, and uh, and the reporters showed up, and then the De Maurier guy uh, realized he forgot the check. <laughs> and the reporters are outside, he was going to be photographed, and now what do we do? Uh, but we're theater people, we can do anything. So uh, the uh, reporters are ushered in, and uh, Moriah guy makes his speech and Billy makes his gracious acceptance and an empty envelope is handed over. There's <laughs> <laughs> the flash bulbs pop. Yeah. Um, it's all in here. Yeah. But again, you know, um, you need everybody. It was also back in the 70s when we reviewed the paper like this. Yeah. And it was amazing. Our paper was yellow, green, blue, and it was hippie. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and the, the logo, Terrible, and Stephen will remember this. Um, another unsung hero in all of this was Bill's wife at the time, Jane Glasgow. She did a lot of, I mean, she came from a very, a very good thing, I think as well. But she really dedicated a lot of time. Mostly, she means rich. Yeah. <laughs> but also, also, I think it was Jane, like when we started off, Stephen and I, you remember, we would go over to Bill and Jane's house in Rosedale, and she would feed us. You know, that's where we did a lot of our creative work, sitting around the table with their two little kids running around, Ryan and Rufus, and J 
Jane just feeding us from the kitchen. And I remember the old, we were all trying to think of the name because we had to apply for something for grants. And um, Bill's favorite herb was terrifying. That's, that's what happened. And uh, there's a wonderful uh, young son, the fellow that designed the Street Sandwich set, Ron Conrad, who was a really great artist. And he did the logo. I mean, and, and then it went up on the front of it. That's how the name came about. So it was just uh, kind of everybody throwing ideas at it. Talk about collaboration. We couldn't get a name. We had a list. Yeah, we, we, just we, had, we had 40 or 50 suggestions. And, and we couldn't we couldn't come up with it. We did have the sign that were yeah, on the front of the door coming yeah, in called the, uh, the, the Palace of Dreams. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>
But he's so startled to realize, I hate this fucking audience. <laughs> Why are we doing anything for these precious people? <laughs> now, that was undoubtedly extreme. <laughs>